Hello and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me once again. I don't think it would be right uh, if I didn't begin this video by saying how our thoughts are with all those in Ukraine and the um, devastation and uh, the death and injury in Ukraine is very much on our minds and uh, we are very uh, mindful of the problems you face and we just pray that uh, peace will come very quickly to your wonderful and democratic country. So that's the message before we start the video. I know a lot of you have tried and switched and changed over to the NFIT half-wave antenna. A very successful antenna it is. It's very simple to install. It uh, is quite happy to be bent around the garden. You may have to adjust the length slightly to compensate, but you can bring it to resonance. And once you've brought it to resonance on the baseband, which generally speaking is either 80 meters or 40 meters, then the other bands take care of themselves. Well, perhaps they don't. You may have noticed that uh, the commercial manufacturers use a little tiny coil. It's actually wound on a one inch former and it's got five turns, or this seems to be the general um, arrangement there, five turns. And it's placed two meters from the feed point of the antenna. So in other words, it's two meters along from the point at which the antenna enters the 49 to one ana. So what is the reason for that? Do you need one? Well, you may do, you may not. Perhaps in this video I can just explain the function of it and another alternative which you might want to consider as well. Because when we multiply up from the baseband on 40 meters or 80 meters, everything is multiplied several times. If we take the 80 meter antenna, then whatever function or whatever um, tuning you arrange on 80 meters that is multiplied eight times and ends up the 10 meter band and of course it's not too difficult to understand that a 25 kilohertz change in frequency on 80 meters is multiplied eight times on 10 meters so any changes you make on the 80 meter band are multiplied up and you need to consider how they affect the other bands, the harmonic bands. The same applies to an antenna that covers 40 meters or starts off on 40 meters, but of course the multiplication is not so great, so it's not so much of a problem. Let me first of all put up on the screen a typical 40 meter arrangement that uh, I've used in the past, and you'll see that uh, uh, there is no real problem there. Let's take a look. You can see it puts us in the phone band areas of all bands. On 10 metres it's slightly low, but that really doesn't matter because the bandwidth will be quite good. Now let's take a look at 80 metres, see what happens. Perhaps you're, you're a CW operator. So you resonate your antenna at, what should we say, 3.55. That's probably not a bad point on the 80 metre band. Well, it resonate the antenna at 3.550 megahertz. Now let's take a look and see what happens on the other bands. Now you can see quite clearly that as you multiply up, what is in the CW area on 80 meters ends up higher up on the other bands into the phone section, which is not really what you want if you're a CW operator. And this is really where the coil comes in. The coil has the effect of lowering the frequency on the higher bands. So as you go up towards 10 meters, so this coil will bring the resonant frequency down. In other words, it has more effect on the higher frequencies than the lower frequencies. It has very little effect on 80 meters, but on 10 meters, it will have the effect of lowering the frequency. What actually happens it brings that antenna on the higher frequencies back down into the CW range. And that really is 
uh, of prime importance on the 80 meter band. On the 40 meter band, as you've already seen, uh, that's not too much of a problem. So, in a nutshell, if you've got an 80 meter base band antenna that covers 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10, and you operate on the CW end, and you tune your antenna at the bottom of the band, then that coil will help to lower the resonant frequencies on the higher bands. So what happens if you operate on the phone section of 80 meters? Well, things get quite radical. Let's suppose in that you resonate your antenna on 3.7 megahertz, which is probably uh, not a bad place to resonate it. And then we multiply that up to 10 meters. Well, it, yes, it's a bit of a disaster. <laughs> um, you're out of band immediately on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and on 10 meters, you're just about in at the top. So that's not good at all. Again, this coil added to the antenna will actually help to bring those resonant frequencies on 20, 15 and 10 meters down to more reasonable levels. So you could, with this coil, place the resonances back into the part of the phone bands that are interested in, particularly on 15 and 10 meters. But there is another way. We've seen how a coil will actually lower frequencies and as it gets progressively higher, the operating frequency gets progressively higher, that inductance has more effect. Well, we can use a capacitor. Let's go back to 80 meters and we resonate our antenna at 3.7 megahertz. Now we know that when we get up to 10 meters, the the resonant frequency is far too high. We can cut our antenna in half and insert a capacitor. Now what happens when you insert a capacitor in an antenna is you raise the frequency. It's the opposite of adding inductance. Inductance lowers the frequency, put in a capacitor in series with the antenna, raises the frequency. Why would you want to do that? Let's go back to the 40 meter antenna, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 and 10. We've seen that that is not too much of a problem. So if we adjust our 80 meter longer antenna to give a proper resonance on 40 meters, then 40, 20, 15 and 10 fall into line. Let's uh, show this on the screen. I've resonated the antenna back on 3.55 megahertz, which puts you in the CW section on 80 meters, but harmonically it's then very useful because on 40 meters it gives us 7.1 megahertz, and on 20 meters it gives us 14.2, etc. It's a nice arrangement. Now, if we were to cut the 80 meter antenna, which is uh, 40 meters long, the 40 meter length of wire, we cut that in half and we insert a capacitor. We have the ability to raise the frequency. We can raise it from 3.55 up to say 3.7 or wherever you would like to go. Now, the good thing about the capacitor is we probably need something between 250 picofarads and 500 picofarads and you'll have to experiment to find the right value. But either of those values have very little effect on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 and 10. So what we can now do is we can, we can place a capacitor in series with the antenna. We can raise the frequency on 80 meters to bring it into the phone band. And we haven't disturbed the antenna operation on the other bands because fundamentally the antenna was resonant on 3.55 and when we put the capacitor in on 80 meters that capacitor is a short circuit on 40 20 15 and 10 so the antenna really hasn't changed a lot well, in fact it's hardly changed at all but on 80 meters the frequency has been raised now you will need that capacitor to be rated at a fairly high voltage i would suggest something like 2 kv um, 
probably more than actually. So if you get yourself a couple of capacitors, each rated at 2 kV, so you have 500 picofarad capacitors rated at 2 kV, put them in series, you've got a 4 kV rating and a capacity of 250 picofarads because the, the capacitors are in series. That will probably shift you well up into the 80 meter phone band. Now, it does, it does need some experimentation. And what you can do, of course, is to get yourself two or three capacitors, just normal capacitors, sort of fairly reasonable voltage rating, put a bit of low power in there or your antenna analyzer, work out what capacitor you need, and then get the right capacitors with the higher voltage. As I say, to get the higher voltage ratings, you may have to series up your capacitors. But with this arrangement, you can then have an antenna which is resonant just where you want it on all five bands. So in a nutshell, that coil, that loading coil, will help you out whether you're a CW operator or a SSB operator or phone operator, provided you've got an antenna which is 40 meters long where the baseband is on 80 meters. If you've got the shorter version where the antenna is 20 meters long with a baseband on 40 meters, you don't need that coil. But you might also want to try the capacitor as an alternative, because to me that seems to make more sense. So a little bit of experimentation and some ideas to try. You know, ham radio is all about trying things out. I can remember when I was a youngster, <laughs> Uh, when I was living at home, <clears throat> I, was, uh, I would often go out in the garden with, if it was raining with a, with a raincoat on um, and get myself absolutely soaked, but I was so intent on adjusting the antennas that so this, the rain then didn't seem to worry me too much. It was worth getting a little bit wet in order to get the antenna to work properly. And, and in fact, I'm not sure it actually worked that well because you see, in, back in 1959, 1960, when I was first licensed, we had the Sunspot Maximum, and conditions were absolutely amazing. And I probably kidded myself that making these changes actually improved the uh, performance of the antenna. And I didn't have any, any means of measuring it. I didn't have VSWR meters, just used to have neon tubes. If they lit up, you knew you were radiating a signal of some sort <laughs> over the days. But let's be a bit more scientific now. And with the knowledge and with the VSWR meters or antenna analyzers, it's all a lot more scientific, certainly a lot easier and a lot more positive. You can see the results you get. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it's uh, been useful. I hope it will um, uh, persuade you to go out in the garden, not when it's raining, of course. No, we don't do that now, do we? But to go out in the garden and try these, try these uh, changes out. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So there we are. As usual, enjoy your ham radio. You take care. See you in the next video. Bye.